uh, appreciation to our fans and to uh, uh, the Philadelphia Modifiers, who uh, have always uh, you know, supported us in racing. Uh, we're here. Uh, we have seven race cars we're going to fire up tonight. It's kind of like uh, our, our spring, you know, blow out the winter, uh, you know, event. Uh, you know, with the accumulation, of course, going to be the frantic Ford firing up on a, a heavy dose of nitro. Okay. That should be something to hear. Yeah. I guess I'm sure the neighbors are going to love me after this. <laughs> But I know I've been going to the modifiers events at ACO for years, and you guys are always there. Yeah. You know, so. Well, we try to support the modifiers. Like I said, it's the you know the oldest street rod, rod club in America, right. and uh, there's some really great guys that are involved in it. And, and uh, this is what we can do. You know, we uh, we use it as a kind of a test session for us. So we go out there. It was my dad's home track. Right. So to me, it's kind of like every time I go there, it's like a reunion, you know, in itself. This is like you know, I was a teenager when your dad was racing at ATCO with the Willies, you know, and I remember that. It just you know, makes me feel like I'm young again. <laughs> cool. That's and, you know, our, our business card says, you know, we, we, we make dreams come true. And uh, and I tell everybody, all I'm doing is building these cars for my own, you know, my own youth, you know, from back in the day. And like I said, the KS car, the Boss Hydro car, these are the cars that I grew up with and I loved. So it's just that uh, we're blessed to have guys like Al, you know, support us and come out there and, uh, you know, have the same kind of passion we do. And, uh, my, of course, my father-in-law, Bill Ellershaw, and I got a great crew of, you know, of, of uh, our race team. It's, it numbers about 20 different people, and they come in. They're all volunteer. They all, they all work very hard. They love this stuff as much as we do, and it's just kind of a really cool thing. Yeah. I was speaking of Boss Hydro, I was just saying to somebody today, I remember that shop up on Torsdale Avenue by uh, – East Autobot. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, back in the day, Boss Hydro, my dad was one of the first pioneers in the automatic transmissions. Uh, and like I said, uh, you know, that was the name. I mean, of course, he yeah. put transmissions in the K&G Frantic Ford, uh, you know, a, a lot of any tri record holding cars. And, you know, the Boss Hydro is a tribute to him, but really every car we build really is a tribute to my dad. You know, my dad made a big mark on me and a lot of other people, too. And, uh, and again, we're, we're out here trying to keep his memory alive, along with KS's and Big John Masmanians and a lot of these guys that aren't here anymore. You know, right. uh, you know, we were lucky enough to see these cars run, right. and a lot of these kids today, growing up, they, they had no clue. Yeah. And it's so neat to see the young guys get involved in this stuff. We have, we have, you know, my daughter's involved. She's, you know, 15 years old. My son's 16. Uh, we got some, you know, people in their 20s that are loving this stuff, and it's like, wow, you know. And it's neat to see them away from the Hondas and the Toyotas, right. and you know, yeah. back to American muscle. You know, Chrysler Hemi's and big block Chevys and things like that. So I was probably 16, 17 years old, and I used to go down and see Ohio George Montgomery yeah. and KS Pittman and your dad and. Big John Masmanian and all of them, and all match races, and they, yeah. they were great. That was absolutely the best times. Yeah, well, <laughs> one of the driving forces, I always say, in 68, it was probably the the changeover from the gassers to the funny cars. Mm -hmm. And there was a big double-way gas meet down at Atco Dragway. My dad, you know, out ran the KS Pittman car. And to me, it was like beating John Force. I guess right. I was an 8-year-old yeah. kid, and I loved it. Right. And I tell everybody, it was like, I remember being 8 years old, thinking to myself, Man, I wish I was 16 so I could drive. And by the time I became 16, it was 1977, and it was all gone. Yeah. You know, and bracket racing yeah. came in. I was just never into that. And it just seemed like the match racing was kind of dying down. And I tell everybody, I was kind of like, wow. You know, I finally got to the party where I can drive a race car, and they're all gone. And we brought, we actually bought the Boss Hydro back in 1981. Right. And my dad had sold it in 68. And I never forget going to Atco Dragway and the tech guy look at it and saying, why would you bring this old race car out and race it? And I told the guy, I said, if I got to explain it to you, you ain't going to understand it. So, But it was neat to be in, in, on the front edge of the nostalgia races. We were at the very first old-time drags over at Englishtown, New Jersey, one of the very first Philadelphia Modifiers events. And to me, this was like you know, my chance to go out there and have some fun with this stuff. And it stuck. And I wouldn't do anything else besides run these cars. I mean, it's just great. I mean, the cars today are neat and all. But this stuff is just out of this world. And I guess it's because it's what I grew up on. Yeah, and I grew up at the end of it, you know, 68, 69 and whatnot. Well, I still say, I always build cars for myself, you know, things that I like. But I'm amazed how many people are into this stuff today. And it is so cool to see how many people really like the stuff that we're doing. And like I said, it's a testament to my whole team, testament to Al. Like I said, it's a testament to the guys that want to still bring these cars back and put a show on. That's what, really what we're about. You know, we're about there. We're, we want to bring people back to the 60s and the 70s when drag racing was far out, you know, as Jungle Jim would say. You know, right. when it was a quarter mile smoky burnout, header of flames, dry hops. You know, we, we put the hair up on your, on, your, on your skin, you know. And was drag racing was neat. None of these just a 
I call them the NHRA burnout, barely past the tree, no smoke. Right. You know, we're there to bring the, the wow back to the fans. Yeah. So, yeah. like I said, we've been doing it for a lot of years, and we plan on keep on doing it. Yeah. When I show my son how he used to have to push the dragsters down the track, yep. and turn around and come back, yeah. you know. It's a shame we didn't bring him. We're going to try it tonight. The traffic's not too bad. It's not too busy. I don't think I told you that yet, but okay. if everything works out well, we're going to take that Soul Survivor comp coupe a couple blocks down. We're going to push the art down towards the lab and we'll fire it up. So. Okay. That'll be great. Yep. And, Al, your partner's on this Yeah, I'm, I'm the marketing partner with Rocky on the car. Uh, I go back to the early funny cars in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I was involved uh, with a couple of West Coast cars. And recently I was involved about 10 years ago with Gary Dencham. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought the NEC deal, and I got involved with Rocky about, uh, about two years ago mm -hmm. on the recreation of this frantic Ford. We had another frantic Ford, but uh, things didn't work out. We had some motor issues, so we kind of parked that. And uh, it's, it's been a great relationship. Uh, like I said, I go back, uh, had my first funny car with guys in 73. So I, I can relate to everything. I can relate to the Jungle Gym, the Bruce Larson days, the Brutus cars, the long smoky burnouts, the fire burnouts, whatever. That's what people wanted to see. And uh, I mean, we're like Rocky said, we're, we're entertainment. You know, I tell people we're here to put the show on. We're here to put, quote unquote, uh, asses in the seats and the fans love it. I mean, like I said, we couldn't do anything without our sponsors. I mean, uh, we have a great website, uh, franticford.com. We updated every... I would say maybe sometimes twice a day. You know, Pat Welsh is our media, media guy. He's our webmaster. He's doing a great job. I mean, I couldn't do anything without guys from Lucas, uh, Mr. Gasket, SMBTs, PPG. They provide the paint for all the cars. They also provided the paint recently for the uh, KS Pittman car. CRC, uh, M&H, uh, Mechanics Wear, uh, Clevite. I mean, the list goes on and on. Every uh, champion, we just picked up champion spark plugs. So every week we're picking up a little more. But what's nice, what we do different is, besides the racing, we're doing a lot for charity. Right. We're heavily involved with Alex Lemonade Foundation. And that's what it's for right. tonight. We're, which, right. What it's for tonight. And uh, we're also involved with um, Ronald McDonald House of Central New York with a called Artie's Parties. It's a pinstriping event that's held at the Syracuse Nationals. Last year we went there and we started a car up and people were paying anywhere between three and five hundred dollars to sit in the car for three to minutes. Piece of artwork, sign, whatever. We raised about an extra seven or eight thousand dollars. So they ended up with about eighty thousand wow. dollars. And they loved it. So uh, our sponsors feel that we're doing a lot off the track than we do on the track. And they just want to get on a bandwagon. So, you know, like I said, I, I couldn't have been happier to be involved with Rocky. It's nice things get done during the day. I have a real full-time job. I travel a lot. So I spend the, my nights, my evenings, you know, spending time trying to get sponsors and getting people involved with our team. Okay, well, that's great. Well, we're going to be hanging out here all night, and I just can't wait to see these things get fired up. And uh, to see one do a smoky burn out down Torresdale Avenue will just be awesome. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, it's just, you know, something that I haven't seen – in a long time, you know, cars doing burnouts on the street. But uh, with a dragster, it's it's pretty neat. Flames over the roof of the car. Right. Same thing when he starts up the gassers. Right. Uh, but, again, like I said, I might have missed a couple sponsors. But, again, uh, ISC, a racing tape, uh, mm -hmm. car show depots. These are guys that do our signs for us. So visit us, our website, mm -hmm. franticford.com. Visit our Facebook page, Return to Frantic Ford. Uh, be a fan. Follow us. And uh, hope to see you guys at the races. In honor of Al Zerniak. Al was a top fuel racer from back in the 60s. And as a kid, I heard stories of him push start the top fuel car down Aramingo Avenue. I thought to myself, someday I want to do that. And so that's one from my bucket list there. So I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Hey, that was cool. yeah. Having fun and uh, again, bringing back the fun and drag racing again. Uh, as we fire each car up individually right now, I'll give you a little story on each car. I mean, we build race cars, but we try to build cars that mean something to us, too. This was a tribute to my dad, uh, Joe Perone Jr. Um, again, he's the reason why we're here and why we, we build these cars. Every car we build is a tribute to him. The Boss Hydro was built back in 1967. At the time, it was one of the fastest cars with doors on on the East Coast to run at Atco Dragway. We ran a 905 Best back then. Uh, we did this tribute to him in 2001. This car has been quite successful on, on its own merit also. It's won the Bowling Green National Hot Rod Reunion. It's won the Willie's Home Run numerous up in Buffalo, New York. It's won the Gasser Nationals out of Thompson, Ohio. Um, in the car is uh, my son, Joe the Fourth. So it's uh, my dad's, of course, my dad's grandson. And uh, we're going to cackle this one first, and we're going to go right down the line with the rest of them. See with the yeah. car, the California car, 
And KS was arguably probably one of the, the first uh, touring professionals back in the early 60s. He was the John Force of drag racing. Uh, my dad had a chance to race against him uh, on a few occasions. Uh, if anyone's been through our shop, you'll see the black and white photo of my dad racing KS at Akko in 68. Uh, in the car is going to be Mike Hall. It's Harry Hall's son. Harry also drove the car. He actually owned the car longer than KS did, from 68 to 72. So the KS car, with the history behind this car, this is the first car to ever go eight seconds in a quarter mile with gasoline and doors. Uh, Southern California car, killer car. And uh, it was a, you know, it was a cool deal. KS himself asked us to recreate the car, and we did it as a tribute to him. He's passed away in 2010, but uh, we, we like to say his spirits with us. Freddie Bear has driven this car uh, great. Uh, the last couple of seasons, he won the U.S. Nationals in Indy. He's won the Hot Rod Reunion in Bowling Green twice. It's won every single event it could possibly win in Double A gas competition. And uh, this is probably going to be the last last year for this car. We're going to retire after this season. Tasmanian cars, that candy apple red 40 that's next to it. That car in 1964 was the car in the country. It was the first car to go nine seconds in a quarter mile back in 1964. Uh, Big John uh, always known for some beautiful race cars as you can see that. And, you know, we recreated the car as a tribute, but that's the way the car looked. We didn't pick the colors. Tasmanian was just a he was just a high dollar guy that has some beautiful hot rods. And as you can see the car was a gorgeous car then, it's a gorgeous car now. Uh, that one's the last car me and my dad and uh, my father-in-law Bill Ellershaw got a chance to build together. And uh, that car has been running since 1985. It's uh, been a member of the, the Hot Rods from Hell, the Wild Bunch. Uh, it's kind of like as you can see next to the uh, the Big John Masmanian car, what they kind of became later on with the four-link suspensions. That car is going 760s at 170 mile an hour and a quarter mile. <laughs> Go to the next one. Go to funny car. The Screaming Eagle uh, Trans Am funny car is an alcohol funny car. We've gone 630s, 220 with that. Uh, that was done on the theme of a Hardy Davidson. Uh, again, very cool car, and uh, we do a lot of racing with that. Up's going to be the frantic Ford. That's a nitro funny car back in the in the late 60s, early 70s, and actually really right through I believe the 77. I believe they stopped racing. And they were the car on the East Coast to beat. And that was the first nitro funny car I ever got a chance to work on. My dad used to do the transmissions for them. And we recreated it with the help of Al uh, Liebman uh, last year. We've been running all over the country with that. Also, we've been down in Florida with it. The Hot Rod Reunion out in Bowling Green. Uh, this year we'll be in Epping, New Hampshire again. It's, it's a fun car. If you get a chance to come out to the racetrack and see it, full quarter mile burnouts, big header flames, dry hops, all the cool things that you know what drag racing is all about. Yeah.